labelled the world's fastest gamer, and he's back here again at ESL R1, driving forward the Mercedes team after watching his teammate Marco Pejic certainly perform very strongly in qualifying uh, at Hockenheim Ring. They'll be looking to try and achieve the same things again, but this time we go to the Temple of Speed here, Lewis. Yeah, it's not my uh, it's not my favourite circuit in all of in, in in all of these. I'm not I'm not a Monza guy, but it is quite good, and it did ob obviously deliver quite a fascinating finale when it debuted back in uh, in the Rennsport Summit back in Munich for the ESL Spring Major. It's a quality track, and it's a track where someone on the grid, in fact, our uh, LG uh, driver to watch is pretty good. Marcel Cincic was rapid around here and of course this is where he won that title uh, for the ESL R1 spring season so it's a big track for him. So it is. Marcel Cincic coming off the back of winning that sprint series at the Major in Munich in great, great style and well worthy I think of the LG driver to watch. Oh, and yeah. uh, I, I would say looking forward to this one. He, he should be in fine fettle, but they'll be looking to bounce back because they had a real tough time with Erhan Yovsky, the other LG driver to watch. Certainly wasn't a day to remember for that of Erhan Yovsky, but RAG will look to try and take that back here this time with Marcel Cincic. Yeah, but let's talk about you know, some of the other drivers on there. Obviously, Marcel Cincic is def I mean, definitely worthy as, uh, as being an LG driver to watch. James Bobbin, like you've said, absolutely rapid. Luke Bennett, I'm not expecting Luke Bennett to be rapid around Monza so much, but I think he will be super, super strong when it comes to the Nürburgring in the next race. Well, let's take you through the lineup here for the ESL R1 brought to you by Aramco. Johan Haaf representing that of the Apex Racing Team. Ryan Barneveld steps up for the BMW BS Plus competition. Uh, Yulas Ozyolder in for FaZe Clan. We've got Lasse back as well for F uh, Furia Team as well. Isaac Price steps up for G2 Esports. Thomas Tatler as well for Heroic. James Baldwin, we spoke to him earlier on as part of the Mercedes AMG Esports crew. Yuri Kastorp lines up for Mouse with Big Mac stepping up. Mac Backham returns here for Porsche Coanda. Marcel Cincic, your current champion from the Spring Series, and Luke Bennett lines up for Team Redline, already scoring two wins on the bounce with Kevin Siggy, and Pajtor lines up as well for that of the Williams team on debut here in this particular series. Great to have him here as well. Williams have a great, uh, certainly a great lineup here as well. Of course, coming into practice, certainly here at Monza, the Templar Speed fast track, Very lots of chicanes, lots of danger, but at the same time, mega opportunities for overtakes. Yeah, it's called the Temple of Speed for a reason. You know, big, big straights uh, going down into the Retifilio, uh, going down into the Roger after you come around Curva Grande. Uh, then you've got that run, that beautiful run through uh, the, the, the Ascari as you can. You've got the two Lesmos at the top of the track. You've got the Parabolica. I'm still going with Parabolica. Yes, the Curva, Curva uh, Alboreto. I'm sorry, but I'm still going with Parabolica, <laughs> even though uh, I'm just I'm just an old man like that. You can't change a corner name. Um, I've, I've got to say, though, when it comes to let's, let's talk points very, very quickly, because coming in, obviously, we've finished with Group A now, so we know where the points are standing for those. And I think anyone below fourth position is already done. Uh, we've got 70 points for first place. That's Kevin Siggy after two victories. 40 points for Tommy Uskard after two second places. And then two drivers locked on 29 points, being Kevin Ellis Jr. and Marco Payic. Those are third and fourth, or really just third, uh, when it comes to it. Uh, we'll discuss a tiebreak if we need to do one later on. Anyone below that, I think, are done. Remember, it has to be the top 12 in the overall standings, which everyone is adding points to. So the Group A standings are already done. Group B will also be adding to that. Yeah, they certainly will do. Uh, and looking at other drivers, obviously, that make part of this lineup, we saw the likes of Kevin Siggy, who has no doubt improved after that really tricky spring season. Of course, he was actually one of the weaker drivers as part of that red line lineup. But to come back from that, take two victories on the spin in a pressure cooker scenario with one of the biggest prize pools you'll see in sim racing. And uh, to step up like he did was sensational as we take a look at Johan Haas making his way through the next right, representing Apex Racing Team, who will no doubt have an abundance of confidence after seeing Kevin Ellis Jr. do some superb things yeah. earlier on. But I would argue that looking at someone like Luke Bennett, he would have a great chance here to perform big, as does this man. And he needs to, of course, this being Marcel Cincic, who we're currently viewing over the shoulder. Obviously makes his way through the Seraglio Strait before then hitting Ascari Chicane. Look at you. You even know the, the little church. I, I, know, know, hello. I know my stuff, of Lewis <laughs> McLeod. <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm genuinely I'm surprised. He's actually got a track map drawn out in front of him. I'm just doing it from, uh, <laughs> from, from, from the old, uh, old, old brain. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> oh, so for me, looking at this, I think Marcel Cincic needs to do well at this track. Because this is this is the strength. He's really, really strong. I think he's he's strong at the Nurburgring. He was battling for race victory with James Baldwin at uh, the Nurburgring in what was the sixth race when it came to uh, to Sunday at the Rennsport Summit. But he's the driver to beat. And then this man. 
pick up whatever points you can get around Monza and go on the attack. And he might win both races, to be fair. Could you imagine a red line sweep, the opening uh, opening few races? He's got to carry on from Kevin Siggy somehow. Well, I, I would argue, based off what we saw in the spring season, if Kevin Siggy can do it, then Luke Bennett definitely can, because yeah. obviously off the back of what we saw from him, of course, he's an event winner, um, you know, finalist winner from ESL R1. And uh, here this time as well, as we take a look Race behind control. the scenes, uh, practice very soon will turn into qualifying here at Monza. And certainly here at the Temple of Speed, there's going to be some rapid lap, lap times being sent around this section. Let's talk about the track itself, of course, a Mon Grand Prix circuit that uh, has certainly been amended uh, only on minor occasions. Opened back on the 3rd of September 1922. Uh, broke ground in that same year, back in the 15th of May 1922. 11 corners await the drivers, 3.6 miles. That's 5.793 kilometers and uh, plenty of corners to watch out for. As we have said, the Retifilio, the Curva Grande, the Roger as well. And just like that, folks, we're going to lay up because qualifying is about to get underway here, Lewis. Yeah, certainly so. And this is one where definitely pole position uh, doesn't m make or, or break your race. But you, in my opinion, at Monster, despite being able to overtake, you must, must, must be on the front two rows. If you're not on those front two rows, you're done with it. That long run is the longest run that we have uh, in range sport when it comes down to the starting grid and turn one. So the long wait starts for some of our drivers is uh, Jen bullock Bassi having a little bit of a conversation with Will Ch Chadwick, of course, the FaZe Clan team. Yeah, this is going to be a big one. It's going to be a massive one. Chembalak Bassi, of course, watching on, giving the drivers every ounce of experience that he can muster, not just in the sim, but also real life. He has contested at the very top in both instances, as now qualifying steps up here, folks. Do not go away. Here we go. Qualifying is upon us, and look who it is. Marcel Cinci getting us underway. The Hungarian, the current ESL R1 Spring Series champion. He is going to kick us off here in Group B as we now look for the first sector here at Monza. Coming through now, the Retifilio chicane at turns one and two. He's going to light up the Curva Grande, where we'll see many a Grande move when we make our way into the race later on. Then the run down towards the Roggia at turns four and five. There is the Hungarian now. The same stare you would have seen, certainly when we went racing at Katowice and soon to end at Munich, where he would lift that trophy aloft and give brilliance to that of his team at RHG2 as they now whip through the Roger chicane as well. We're looking for around a 34.761. We have found a 34.767 here, Lewis. That's mega. That is a really impressive lap time from Marcel Chinching. Of course, this is a circuit he goes well at. This is the circuit he lifted that trophy at. Yes, of course, he did it in Munich, but this was the circuit where he took victory and then held that trophy. It was a fantastic race for him. He was dominant completely in the race, mostly courtesy of his teammate that was on uh, a super duty. The time we in the second sector of 35 5 6 8 what's it going to be as he crosses over the beam as they head in towards Ascari onto the brakes is a 35 5 8 0 this is looking like it's tracking to be one of these mega times that we've seen from Marcel Cinchik a 46 0 2 4 across the line is what he'd set before this is looking like it is definitely going to be a 46 0 foot planted to the floor as he skips over the curbs heading out of Ascari the long straight awaits before hitting the curb or Alboreto big big moment here for Marcel Cinchik can he hook this one up will it be hook like and sinker here for RHG here in the second group of course group B as they now come through the final bend now needs to light up this long straight a little twist of the wheel as we see more movement from the other drivers further back chin chick across the line what's he going to set a 46 162 a stellar showing and very very brilliant showing but it's all up to the others to chase and here comes Luke Bennett yeah first sector is not very good from Luke Bennett making up for it a little bit with a decent final uh, middle sector what can he do in the final one could well be challenging the 46.162 which might will be slower uh, than expected. A couple of other drivers to look out for in this session. Ulas or Zilderum certainly will be one who's 10th uh, at the moment. He'll be the 10th car to go around. Luke Bennett up towards the line, though. He'll cross it. It's been red line sweeps for victory thus far today. And unfortunately, second in qualifying for him at the moment. Here comes Isaac Price. Isaac Price now lines himself up as well, obviously trying to bring G2 to the front. And uh, have got actually a stellar lineup here this weekend, including the likes of the uh, multi-time champion Freddie Rasmussen across a very Various entities in racing. Yoni Tormler ever so experienced. Isaac Price also carrying the same level of weight up at the sharp level as well. Look how tight he is to the inside as he crosses the line. And that's a 146-152 that plants him to the top ahead of Marcel Cinchik by over or just one.
one hundredth of a second. Sensational, Isaac Price. Yeah, that was very impressive. It mostly came down to the middle sector. He set a 5.55, five, five, which is actually faster than what I've got written down as being a decent second sector time. So very, very impressive there from Isaac Price. All made it up there. So uh, bravo to him. And G2 Esports looking pretty strong in this one. Mac Backham coming through the Parabolica, the curve at Alboreto up towards the line. First sector's decent. Second sector, not so much. Losing a tenth and a half there, but it could well be enough to challenge for Luke Bennett. No, it's not. Just fourth on the road. Yeah, just P4 for the Big Mac indeed. Yuri Kastorp representing Mouse as well. 34-7 in the first sector, pretty much in line with where he should be. Sector 2 at 35-5, losing around a tenth with a 35-6, however, as he heads through Curva Alvaretto himself. So Kastorp needs to try and claim as much as he can heading through Sector 3. He will also go extraordinarily tight to the inside, very nearly cutting into the pit lane as he comes towards the line. Kastorp third fastest, the top three, all within a single tenth of a second. Nine hundredths away from Isaac Price, but still Price and G2 on top. Yeah, you could see Yuri Kastorp feeling pretty uh, aggrieved there. He actually slapped the steering wheel a little bit within a tenth of a second of what is presently pole position. Thomas Tatler, I don't think, will be a driver to challenge that. The first sector's gone a little bit away when he's losing about a tenth in the first and a tenth in the second. I'm not even sure he'll be able to get ahead of Mac Backham here. It might well just be sixth on the road for the number 77, representing Heroic. Of course, his teammate's just done so well in Tumi Iskar getting a couple of second places. That's not helped him with his speed so far around the Templar speed as he goes into sixth position. But of course, who's up next? World's fastest gamer. World's fastest gamer, not necessarily. The world's fastest first sector, though, 34.9 is nearly two tenths just out of the realm of the 34.7 he'd probably prefer. 35.5 is what he would require in the second, so a tenth out there again. Again, sector three is very vital as he steps up towards the line. James Baldwin, though, going ahead of Thomas Tatler, six fastest for James Baldwin, but you can tell from the look on his face, he's disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I would, uh, I'd, I mean, the, the, the thing is, we know how fast James Baldwin is. He was contending for uh, the spring season championship. Uh, of course, he was the, uh, the he was the second finalist, second driver to enter finalist mode after that brilliant race five at the uh, at the Rennes Sport Summit, dropping down the order. Now Ryan Barneveld will be the next one to come through uh, the final section again. First sector's gone a little bit wayward. Second sector is actually pretty much akin to what uh, we were seeing there from James Baldwin, and he's going to drop in just behind ahead of Thomas Tatler, but behind James Baldwin for the BMW MT competition. Up steps Ulas Oz Yildirim, the Turk, who uh, is part of the FaZe Clan team as well. Vastly experienced across various different paths of sim racing. Stepped into Wrench Sport, competed in the Spring Series, leading up to the Major in Munich as well. 34-9 in the first sector certainly isn't necessarily competitive. It's more in line of where James Baldwin was. And uh, now heading through the third sector, he's going to look to improve after a pretty... Uh, reasonable second sector, but not enough to trouble the sharp end now as Ulas Ozildrim 3.2 off the time and uh, really suffered greatly. Yeah, it's definitely a slowdown in there. Yeah, uh, Johan Haaf is the next one to come through. First sector's actually pretty decent. The second sector's uh, a tenth and a half off, but that could keep him well within sort of the top five region as he comes through the final corner. The Frenchman will punch his way up towards the line and we'll see what he can do for the Apex Racing Team. Again, uh, good credit for, for him and the team after the decent performance from Kevin Ellis Jr. in the previous one. He'll cross the line and is only good enough for eighth place on the road. Just two more cars left to go. Lasse back will be the first the two. Yeah, we've already had one last say, that being Lasse Sorensen in our previous uh, group. And uh, now it's the turn of Lasse back to try and bring back something this time for that of the Furia team. A 34-9 certainly does place him two tenths off the mark in sector one. Sector two, 37-7, two tenths off that as well as they make their way down through, or should I say, a little bit more than that, two seconds in fact, so definitely has suffered a slowdown as he comes across the line, and certainly that has hindered him somewhat, not as much as you last as you him though, he's 10th fastest. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, losing a couple of seconds with a slowdown, that probably would have been through the Roz, yeah, maybe extending a little bit too much on the inside. Uh, first sector for Daniel Pajdor, okay, not great. Second sector, not great uh, indeed, but of course he is making his debut here uh, on Orange Sport in ESL R1, as is Lasse back, so we'll see what they can do, see what they can piece together as they head up towards the line. Pajdor will cross it, and I think it might all be good enough just for ninth or tenth place. Oh, actually, no, it is not a slowdown in the final. And unfortunately, he will actually start from 11th. Big drama. That's three slowdowns in that in that, uh, in that that session from Lasse back from Daniel Pastor uh, and at the back of the field as well. Yep, your ALJ fastest lap goes to that of Isaac Price. 
He tickles the top end, and I'm sure G2 Esports will be delighted. I can imagine team boss Nathan Tague is going to be thrilled. What a performance from that man. It was very, very tricky, and we're going to take you through as well the starting grid heading into the race. Here we go, folks. Brought to you by Aramco here at the ESL R1 Championship. At the back row, Yulas Ozildrim in 12th place. Alongside him is Daniel Pachtor in 12th. 10th place goes to Lasse back with 8th place, Thomas Tatler. Johan half lines up in 8th with Ryan Barnevelt in 7th spot. The world's fastest gamer, James Baldwin, in 6th with the Big Mac, Mac Backham, representing Porsche Coanda, 5th place. Uh, Luke Bennett in 4th. We have, of course, got Yuri Kansdorp in 3rd place too. And on the front row of the grid, Marcel Cinchik, current champion from Spring City, Series, as well as Isaac Price, the pole sitter. He is your ALG fastest man. The G2 Esports driver, Isaac Price, is on top. And I'm sure he'll be looking to bring this one home, chasing the big results. G2 looking for a major result here at a grand event here at the Gamers 8. It's going to be special. Can he do it here? Yeah, we've got two big drivers of G2 coming up after this, of course, uh, in, in Group C and Group D. Uh, it'll be Yoni Tormela and Sebastian Joe, two drivers who are definitely expecting to work their way through. But Isaac Price has done a mega job there to maybe even throw a third one into the mix. We know Price is fast and he's showing his speed now. If he can take victory here, again, it's one hand on moving through into the next day. And you know what, folks? Anything can happen around Monza, the Temple of Speed. As I've said, get yourself hyped for this one as we take a look back into the arena. There is Ulas Ozildrim just getting himself prepared as well, ready for the start of this one. Will Chadwick as well, team boss <laughs> for FaZe Clan, uh, who's taking a lot of enjoyment out of this as well. The car is obviously getting set, ready for the start of this race. Uh, of course, uh, Chadwick just having a little grin at something that's certainly happened on circuit. Obviously, Team Radio uh, is being utilized by the team managers to communicate with their drivers to try and lay down some instructions. Also, at the same time, manage their races uh, as Yildirim, uh, representing FaZe. Of course, as I said before, infants necessarily in sim racing as uh, race control currently lie at the helm of what's about to happen. We're going to sit tight and very soon the lights will go red. There you can see all five of them in the background. Get set, folks as we await them to go red here for the Temple of Speed race. It's going to be absolutely superb. Uh, G2, they're going to be absolutely thrilled as well with their performance. It has been absolutely stellar from them. And uh, with someone like Isaac Price, so experienced here, Lewis, yeah, we he needs to take the help. We've still got about 50 seconds left of this, uh, this warm-up session between uh, qualifying and the race. <laughs> If only they tripped. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited about this race, Lewis. I, very nearly I don't fell know if that was step. picked up on the broadcast. That <laughs> terrified me. You nearly fallen off this stage. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, no. Uh, anyone who watched uh, the the the, the, the wrench at the spring major will remember that a, a certain learner might have accidentally fired one down the inside quite a little bit uh, too deep and caused quite a conundrum in the first corner. We'll see if that plays its part in here. It's so easy to do. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, the legendary Liuzzi uh, trying that one down into the first goal was it 2011 yes uh, did Antonio Liuzzi send one down the inside in the most bizarre style let's hope that doesn't happen in this fingers crossed not uh, we want to see obviously some good racing here at ESL R1 brought to you by Aramco of course as uh, we now wait for the lights we just saw their uh, practice coming to an end for many of the drivers as well so we're only moments away now folks from getting started here this time around and oh, uh, we, we will be bringing you practice. all the action yeah yeah we're just seeing views from the for the start of practice there as well from from various of the others but um, just bear with us we will be bringing you the action but the ones to watch obviously um, we alluded to Marcel Chinchik and uh, he of course the uh, the LG driver to watch uh, but also we've got uh, drivers up at the sharp end I mean you, you can't factor out I'm going to talk about Luke Bennett again here Lewis because Kevin Siggy didn't have the best form as I said in the spring series comes back takes two wins on the bounce incredible bottle to get to do that but Luke Bennett is a proven winner he has won events leading up to the spring major this is a great opportunity for Redline to go dominant can they get the four on the bounce now if uh, LG's driver of the day is, or the driver to watch rather is Marcel Chinchik who's the George Morgan driver to watch do you want to know what it is who it's Luke Bennett oh god <laughs> mine as well um yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back out. No, see the thing is, I want to, I was gonna pick Luke Bennett. So I'm disappointed that you went first there. But um, 
Well, look, we, there's our LG driver to watch, Marcel Cincic, of course, front row of the grid. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for him. Uh, he is going to certainly be fast and uh, certainly following the trend of what he did uh, in our previous series. He is back again, folks at home. And uh, we're about to get set for this one. As I said, mine's Luke Bennett. What's yours, oh, Lewis oh, McLeod? Oh, oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the easy road. Can't Isaac Price. <laughs> Can't believe <laughs> this is going to take Isaac Price. He's got pole he position. It. We'll we'll go with him. Uh, that's to be fair. I was going to say him curse, but actually I did quite well with Kevin Siggy in the uh, in the previous one. And you did. Marco Pérez did all right. Yeah, no, that's true. So, I think know, you have right. got a better record than me so far. So I will give you that one, Lewis McLean. Let us know as well, folks. Open the live chat. Utilize it. That's what it's there for. Who do you think is going to come out on top here at the Temple of Speed as we wait for the lights to go red? Keep it with us, folks. The drivers just get themselves set and prepared to rush down towards the Retifilio chicane. And as you can see, you can just cut the tension with a knife for the number of drivers. They've been here before, certainly in the realms of ESL R1 competition, but it's never been quite like this before. And as we take a look, Isaac Price, look at that, shutting the eyes, getting himself prepared. They're on the the pressure's getting through here, Lewis. Not to Marcel Cincic, though. He looked pretty calm. They are on the grid, though, and I think this race is about ready to start. The, the lights will begin and they will get themselves going. I mean, it's a long run down to turn one, isn't it, George? That's one thing that we know about this circuit. It is the longest run down to turn one of any circuit. One of the longest straights you'll certainly see here in this series as we now get set and ready for the drivers to get ready here at Monza. The hype is ready. We're ready. Are you ready there at home as well? As five, fourth, well, certainly second light, third light, fourth light, and the fifth light. And it's pedal to the metal. And it is go, 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 go. And like a shot, Isaac Price gets off the line, but the car's behind him queuing up. It's Marcel Cincic in second place. The mouse, though, already looking to pounce this time as well as they make their way down towards turns one and two. Into Marcel Cincic in for the fight. Rub shoulders with Isaac Price on the exit now. And they're going to make their way through towards the Kerber Grande. Will it be a Grande move for Marcel Cincic? It won't be. It's Isaac Price. He leads here at the Temple of Speed. Yeah, but he's squeezing uh, y uh, Yuri Kazdorp onto the curb, coming through Kerber Grande. That won't be viewed on particularly nicely from the Mouse team. And so right onto the rear end, Mouse, it was a good start from Yuri Kazdorp. Got to say, Marcel Cincic gave the attack down in the first corner. You've got the BMW MTBS competition car making contact with Johan Haar from the Apex Racing team in the background. So uh, a couple of issues uh, there as well. But that's kind of what we expect in all this. Ryan Barnevel getting elbows out. You can see the pack Ooh. in the background. You've got Fury in there as well. Lasse back trying to work his way through at the front, though. It's all clean for our race leader. It certainly is, Whoa. but contrast certainly for the back as cars get rubbed out wide. I think that was actually Thomas Tatler taking a visit out into the gravel trap coming out of Lesmo 2 as they make their way down the Seraglio straight. And uh, Chinchik asking the major questions at the very start, very nearly finding his way to the front as well. Further back, you can see there Daniel Pajtor trying to gain on that of Johan Haath. Uh, who's had a reasonable start as well, ninth place. is still working hard, though, to try and furiously rise his way through the field. Lasse back with a little bit of a gap to find. 1.1 seconds in behind that of the big Mac, Mac Backham, who currently sits in sixth place, chasing after James Baldwin as well. Equilateral gaps in the top six pretty much now, but look at this, already Johan Haar feeling the pinch here as Daniel Pajtor in his debut uh, run here in ESL R1 Back again, this time at the game as eight, as we now see him look to try and get into the slipstream here of none other than Johan Haaf. They come down the long straight now, as we said, one of the longest you'll see in sim racing. Coming down now towards turns one and two, movements further up as well. As we can see, the big Mac, Mac Backham, Ryan Barneveld also trying to get himself into the final last seat back, also trying to go side by side, heading through the retrofilio. Johan Haaf saying no, absolutely not, but Pashtor fighting back as he exit out of turns one and two. Yeah, Marcel Jinjic making his way past Isaac Price. So we've missed the move for the race lead. Yuri Kasdorp also close in tow, so maybe we can see the move coming down towards the Raj. Yeah, here he goes, and it's Yuri Kasdorp to the inside. G2 Esports not taking a defensive line there of Isaac Price, but he's going to send it in around the outside. This sometimes works. It does on this occasion. So Marcel Cincic, the champion towards the top. 35 points could be within his reach in a, in a few laps' time, in just eight laps' time. But he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Isaac Price and the BMW struggle on tyres towards the end of this race. He's already starting to struggle a little bit now. This will be big concern to the BMW contingent. Yeah, this fight between Lasse Back and Ryan Barnevel also kicking off as well. 24,000s between them, literally nothing separating them. The side by side ending down the Seraglio straight. Yuri Kazdorp, fresh off the back of threatening Isaac Price for that P2, is not going away. And as we look at the face of Isaac Price right now, he definitely looks like a stressed man right now in behind the wheel of this rig. As now we see them come together again further back. 
back. It's Ryan Barnabelle. Brilliant move there from Lasse back for the Fury team who launched themselves higher and higher. Lasse back on the rise. Seventh place now in this contingent, but back comes Ryan Barnabelle. Yeah, that was a mega move. Here we go, Ryan Barnabelle to the inside as we head down towards the Parabolica, and we'll see what Barnabelle can do. Should be quite easy. He's carried the slipstream off of Ascari, but he's gone in too deep. The door might be open for Daniel Pastor as well to send his way through. Thankfully, the three of them come out surviving, and the Williams Esports car is on the attack. Johan Hart having some troubles in the background as he's dropped behind to Miss Tatler. This battle is certainly not done. I think the race lead almost might be. Lasse back to the left-hand side as we head down towards uh, the Retifilio, and it could be three wide as well as here comes Daniel Pastor as the Williams car gets to the outside. A bit of contact between the two BMWs on the inside, and it's Ryan Barneveld in there as well. Yeah, brilliant move as well. Look at this from Daniel Pastor and Nudge in the back as well as they come out side by side. Out to the Retifilio chicana turns one and two, but look at this already. Thomas Tatler joining the fight, but a stellar move indeed from Ryan Barneveld to hold on to the placement at the expense of that of Daniel Pajdor, who has been on the rise sensationally, but it's near enough three wide, coming out of Curva Grande, into the Roggia once again, still the wheel to wheel, as they come and wrestle through this next segment, Lasse back, watching all this unfold, it's chaos, as Johan Haaf goes through, and new Lasse Gilderim also joins the fight here, Lewis. My goodness, that was some incredible fighting for this lot, they're not fighting high up the order, they're only fighting for seventh place, but they're putting on quite the show, Pajdor to the outside as they head through the second Lesmo, oh my goodness, oh, oh no, he's gone round, he's in the barrier and that's Pashtor dropped down to the back of the order. Uh, absolutely devastating indeed for them, but still the fight ensues. This time, though, without Daniel Pashtor, who has been unseated through the Lesmo section. But look at this now, Oz Yildirim coming into the mix as well. He usurps Ryan Barneveld. He takes P8. Johan Haas now in, in ahead of them as well, holding on. Has a grasp on P7. It looked like he lost it, but he's come back and fought his way back through the field. Thomas Tatler also getting himself within the same tenth of a second. Utilizes the straight, heading into Kerber. Alboreto, there's the view from Johan Half, and take a look this time at Thomas Tatler, sends it down the inside, but here comes the run, down towards turns one and two. Yeah, let's see what's going to happen, Luke Bennett's trying to make the move, Isaac Price, third position, he started from pole position, unfortunately I've cursed him quite a bit, I think that James Bowman as well is going to try and make his way through, uh, you've got three drivers all fighting over nothing, and James Baldwin has gone from fifth to third, that is absolutely incredible, and once again he shows why he's so good in the world of sim racing, I know that Slipstream, but Slipstream is king. But wow, did he play his cards right? That could be the Colonel's choice right there. Oh, Brilliant yeah. stuff from James Baldwin. Third place now, but we've got more moves happening now in between the three of them still. As we now see Isaac Price still trying to gain Luke Bennett, my pick as well for this very race. Tries to look around the outside, heading in towards the Roger. Can't quite find a way through, but will use the switch back once again. Isaac Price making himself look big, coming out of the Roger's chicane. Still though, James Baldwin licking his lips at the prospect of being the Colonel's favorite overtaker as he now heads through the Lesmo one and then through towards Lesmo two. They've got the Seraglio straight coming up next. Luke Bennett right in the wings. Look at this, Isaac Price just ahead of him too. And as I said, red line up the back of a double uh, with that of Kevin Singy. Luke Bennett will be looking for a major result as well, but Marcel Chinchik checking out, showing why he is the OG, the GOAT in this very series, this championship of the back of winning the spring series. Look in the background there, you can see that James Baldwin's rear wing is currently full of Isaac Price. BMW, also with that of Luke Bennett's BMW that's just behind him as well. They come together, the Big Mac Mac backup also bringing himself into the fight as now they cruise up towards Kerber Alboreto again. Yeah, I've got to say as well, uh, as much as we've all said about, you know, all the Luke Bennett's, the uh, Isaac Price's, the Marcel Chinchicks, everyone's kind of forgotten a little bit about Yuri Kastor. What a drive he's having. Second place at the moment, 1.7 seconds clear of that thrilling fight we were seeing between Baldwin Price and Bennett. He is having a stunning race right now, almost keeping up with Marcel Chinchik, who is absolutely lethal around this circuit, and he is proving every reason why right now. He certainly is. Johan Haas, as we once again right on board with him. Of course, they're getting tied up now in the background. As you can see, Luke Bennett trying to force an overtake. He would have seen Kevin Singy making all sorts of big, big major moves in order to encounter P1 results here in our last two races. He's going to look to try and do the same. Of course, a podium up for grabs here at this point as well, because bear in mind there's a fight brewing here for P3. Isaac Price, though, might be a sitting duck heading in towards the Roggia. Bennett now looking, weaving either way, left and right. Isaac Price trying to dodge every particular, well, every waking moment that Isaac Price could, well, that Luke Bennett could try and marshal in that effective move. Coming through Lesmo 1, again looking down the inside, but Price again making himself look big in what could be and what 
has to be potentially labelled as a stellar defensive drive. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, Isaac Price is doing everything he can. I mean, he, he might, he's going to be disappointed that he started first and he's dropped down now to fourth position. But again, you need to hammer home the points. We know uh, that particularly this driver here, Luke Bennett, we know he should be strong uh, when he comes to the next race, which will be at the Nürburgring, the fourth track here on Rensport. But shoulda, woulda, coulda. If you're not going to be there, you, you, you've got to score as many points now so you don't have to do so much work later on. That's the big thing. Well, we do have an Al Habib defensive driver of the, should we say, the series award. So I tell you what, that could be one of them if Isaac Price can keep this up. But bear in mind, he's only defending fourth place right now. He'll want a little bit more, uh, to say the least. James Baldwin currently sat in third place, one and a half seconds off uh, the lead. That uh, lead there of Marcel Chinchik up at the very top and Yuri Kansdorp as well in the mix. One and a half, or 1.4 more like now. It's dipping down to the 1.3s. Luke Bennett, who we're currently riding on board with, has a little look there to the left-hand side. Of course, these drivers will be monitoring tyre temperatures as well as the mirrors, just to see if there's any movements further back. Mac Backham is in behind Luke Bennett at this point as well, heading through turns one and two with the Retta Filio. They will again put the throttle down to the floor. James Baldwin this time has got Isaac Price for company. He's coming right back at the world's fastest gamer as they come around Curva Grande once again. Of course, James Baldwin, a real racing driver, competing in the realms of the 24 hours of Spa, representing the Garage 5019, this time donning that of the Mercedes once again as he did so in the spring season leading up to the Munich Major as we now pan across the arena once again. Isaac Price once again a little slow heading out of the Roger, which does open the door for Luke Bennett but if Price continues the way he has done it's going to be very hard for Bennett to challenge. Yeah certainly so I mean it was more Isaac Price actually looking to the back of James Baldwin to try and make a move. The three Brits uh, running third, fourth and fifth. Price trying to work his way through alas no uh, real option for him. They've started closing in a little bit especially since Baldwin's got through they've started closing back in uh, on on Yuri Kazdorp, so there could well be potential for a move between uh, the Mercedes AMG Petronas Esports team and Mouse. Uh, see if there might be a switch for second spot. Obviously, obviously, Baldwin will be hungry for it, but again, this goes back to what we were talking about in the previous race. Does Isaac Price go for a move right now? Because realistically, if you try something, they're going to lose more time. But James Baldwin closing down, it could well be better for the entirety of this group if you play your cards patiently. That goes for Luke Bennett as well. Yeah, and this time it's going to be Luke Bennett who challenges Isaac Price. He's been waiting for this moment all race long. A little bit softer on the brace. He's going to try and feather the throttle. If he can try and clamber down the inside here, he will have the better run heading out though. But look at this, Isaac Price able to come straight back and they're still wheel to wheel. Well, at this point, as we're now looking further on, James Baldwin counting his lucky stars with all this unfolding because it will enlarge the gap between them as they now make their way down towards turn one again. And Luke Bennett testing the tenacity of Isaac Price, who once again, a defensive masterclass, the Great Wall of Price erupting here at Monza, a stellar showing he wants fourth place. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if Bennett's really going on. I, I get the feeling that Bennett would have actually properly, properly sent that if he felt more confident in doing so. Slightly tighter line there and thought, actually, actually do you know what? Now's not the time. Ask me again in a couple of laps time and it might well send it down the inside big time. Luke Bennett is being kind of where I expected, where he's slightly uh, more patient than, than I was expecting, but still less patient than what we'd seen before. Uh, but still, that, uh, that, that is exactly what it is. Isaac Price are on board with that. Look at this battle, though, in the background as we see the fight continuing between the uh, the FaZe and the Heroic teams. Of course, 7th and 8th for them. Ulas Azildrim ahead of Timis Tatler and Ryan Barnabell. Yeah, coming through the Lesmo section now, Thomas Tatler. Fine, well, definitely Viner coming through that segment, of course, it nearly unseated that of Ulas Ozjuldrim coming through Lesmo too, but as they now come down towards the Seraglio straight, great chance here now for Thomas Tatlett. Looks around the outside, a heroic move perhaps, heading in towards the Ascari chicane. And certainly, once again, Ulas Ozjuldrim making himself look big. Thomas Tatlett thought about the switchback, decided against it. Probably a wise option, considering you've got Ryan Barneville just in behind you as well. Coming down the straight now once again, this time leading towards that of Kerber Alboreto again. The heroic car looks to try and drag itself further and further up the field. Also being joined by Barneveld in behind, who's watching this unfold. Goes down the inside, Ryan Barneveld! Oh my goodness me, a fantastic move from Barneveld! A absolutely stellar move to go for two for the price of one. And now at this point, Ulas Ozildrim wondering what had happened. Obviously, he managed to go up the inside, ending through Kerber Alboreto. A stellar move 
from the from the BMW BS competition car. As now we're seeing Thomas Tatler fight back straight away. Oh, it could be yet wide. three wide into Retafilio. Look at them. Look at us the rim as well. Round the inside, which will soon become the outside because enter Thomas Tatler. They come together wheel to wheel. The two Porsches can't fight the BMW. That's brilliant stuff between the pair of them, though. Ryan Barnevel making up a couple of positions here now to the head of this field, the head round curve of Grande as well. Ulas Azildrim will be the next one who he'll try and work his way back through. The problem is, is once they work their way through, the next one gets through, the next one gets through, and here we go again. The roller coaster begins up towards the Roger. We cut away from it, but I think Azildrim wasn't really going to be close enough to be trying anything as well. So he stays in eighth position. We head back up towards the fight where James Bolbin is ahead to third, uh, but he is closing in. Look at the gap 1.1 seconds now between. James Baldwin and Yuri Castro. He's almost in slipstream range. He is. He's very, very close indeed. Lap eight of nine here. And we're coming down now on the penultimate lap. Soon to be the final lap. And it's Chinchik who leads the way. The man who was crowned champion back at the Munich Summit is on top yet again. This time in his first race here in this Group B of ESL R1. Sponsored by Aramco here at the Gamers 8. And it's going to be a sensational series if he can continue this as well. Can he match? the successes from Kevin Siggy. We'll have to wait and see. Yuri Kazdorp, now 1.4 seconds behind Chinchik, has a lot to worry about because Baldwin is on the charge and looking to give chase. But look at Luke Benny here, Lewis McLean. He is hovering all over the back of Isaac Price yet again. Yeah, he's not going to wait now, surely. It's, it's, it's now or never. We're on the final lap. There's no patience left. I mean, maybe James Baldwin might be able to attack for, for second, but Luke Bennett doesn't care about that. He wants fourth position. He wants to try and get himself maybe to third in the final portions of this lap. So to the outside, he'll go and he'll clear Isaac Price by the time they get down towards the Retifilio. Mac Backham not quite close enough to attack from all of that. A decent move there from the Team Redline car. It mostly came courtesy of the slipstream, though. Bennett brilliance, and it was a justifiable move. It was a smooth move heading down the home main straight leading towards the Retifilio chicane. We're on the final lap of the race, nine laps out of nine here at the Temple of Speed, the home of the Tafosi as well. James Baldwin with his rear view currently set on that of Luke Bennett, which could yet be a decisive factor here for P3 in this contingent. They come together heading out of the Roger still. Lesmo one and Lesmo two still to come. Can he make the crucial overtake? Could it be Bennett into P3 here, Lewis? I get the feeling that, that Baldwin's overdriven it. He's, he's kind of over, he drove, drove it into the Roger. He overdrove it a little bit into the first. Lesmo as well. Second Lesmo, the apex has hit quite nicely. Far be it from me to tell uh, you know someone with, with those kind of accolades as to whether you've overdriven it or not. But I get the feeling there is almost certainly a move on the cart here for Luke Bennett. Maybe not into Ascari, but certainly if they come down into the Parabolica for the final time. But they head up towards Ascari. Baldwin's got a decent run. He must nail this sector. Failure here will lose the podium. Yeah, certainly James Baldwin with many a credential across his entire racing career, whether it be sim racing or the real life. But Luke Bennett with ESL R1 credentials. But this man, Marcel Chinchik, has the greatest credential of all. He is the ESL R1 Spring Series champion, and he's about to round the curve of Alboreto for the final time here in lap nine of nine. Make his way down the straight. He can't quite believe it, but his team at RAG, they surely will. Marcel Chinchik wins here at Monza, and he here in his first race, here at the Gamers 8, they're on top, Lewis McGlade. Yeah, bravo. Said he would be good around this circuit. He would have known, and I'm sure that's what he's going to say uh, a little bit post-race as well, that this was a circuit he needed to take advantage of. And Marcel Chinchik on top once again at the Autodrama Internazionale di Monza. He is fast here, and now the weight is off his shoulders when it comes to racing at the Nürburgring. He's put himself in good stead to move through into Friday's action, and of course, it had to be the champion. Sparks on display. It certainly was a lit performance from Marcel Chinchik, a stellar driver for the Hungarian, and he's hungry for more. Nürburgring Terrible. beckons. <laughs> I thought it was good. But your winner, without a doubt, is that man indeed. Marcel Chinchik looking to follow suit after a stellar drive, and he will be waiting in the wings as we see our man Barney standing by, and he's being joined by Marcel Chinchik, your race winner. First race down of Group B. Welcome back to the main stage. I'm joined by Marcel Chinchik. Marcel, turn one at Monza is done. Breathe a sigh of relief. But once you got out in the lead, it seemed like pretty smooth sailing. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, it was a really good race. Like, uh, I felt I have a, a little bit pace advantage compared to Isaac, so I was trying to go for the move, and it was working out. So, And after that, uh, even uh, Yuri overtook him, and I had a little bit of gap, and I just tried to maintain it, you know, so, so it was happening. <laughs>
بالضبط بعد ما سالنا المتسابقه مارسيل شينشن عن السباق كيف كان وذكر انه كان كان السباق كان تحدي كبير خصوصا انه كان في بعض المتسابقين كانوا يستغلون المساحات عليه بشكل جدا ممتاز فهو حاول انه انه يقفل هذه الفرص كامله وقدر انه 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 يتفوق في هذا السباق وفعلا جالس يثبت جدارته في هذا السباق Marcel, I know that you need to kind of refocus and reset yourself, but next up you've got Nürburgring. How are you feeling about that track? Uh, that could, that's going to be a bit harder, <laughs> let's say, but I try my best. Like, no, I won, so I have a good chance, hopefully, to get into the 12, so I will try to, try to go a bit safer, let's say. بالضبط بعد ما سالنا المتسابق ان كيف سباقك الجاي راح يكون وذكر ان المتسابق قال باذن الله راح يكون افضل وراح حتى برضه يسيطر على اعصابه بشكل افضل وراح يحقق النصر في السباق التالي. Well the pressure is slightly off now but obviously you know that you're going to need to reset to go into the Nürburgring ring so best of luck congratulations on the first win on the board and with that we're going to go back to the desk to break everything down before we head into our next track.